what's the future of the Novus Ordo in America? I honestly don't know. And what was your I, what was your thoughts on Pope Francis's motu proprio? I'm I'm somewhat of two minds on it. So I one I don't like. There's actually a canon in canon law that says you're not supposed like there. It's actually a canonical. You can be canonically penalized for harboring or for instigating animosity against the Holy Father. Like there's a canonical penalties for instigating animos fostering and propagating animosity against the Holy Father. Like people don't realize that it's it's how something. how does one so how does one correct the Holy Father? Or well, gently here's the and thing. lovingly criticized right. without that being in. So here's the thing. I think typically there's there's two there's different situations and scenarios. If someone comes to me as a theologian asking me, like, I'm confused about this. What do you think about like I might be able to counsel them in a certain way, mm -hmm. which is different than I don't like what Rome's doing, so I'm gonna grab my megaphone and tell the whole world that I don't like what Rome's doing. Yeah, my YouTube channel. Right. Or yeah. whatever. Like and my aim in life is going to be to ridicule him and make fun of him repeatedly. And like, that's what my whole shtick is. That's dangerous. And, you know, it's not like we have to agree with the thing popes do. I, I was of two minds because as I said, at the time I was going to the traditional Latin mass at a diocesan parish, like 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. Like, um, has that since ceased? Just cause I moved. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's still so, going on. Yeah, they still do it okay. at that parish, actually. Nothing's really changed. Um, great parish, actually. But um, no, now I go to an ordinariate now, which right. is very beautiful in the way they do it. But this, is kind, of, this yeah. is kind of problematic. You've got people like me who seek refuge in the East, people like you going to the ordinariate. Mm -hmm. And we can pretend that we're not running away from what's bad, but we're running towards what's beautiful. But that's not entirely true. I think you're probably going to find Eastern churches exploding around the country and ordinary yeah. it's because people yeah. are just walking away from they they are at the same time i do see hope because i do think slowly but surely the ordinary form masses are getting better i've seen i mean even when i was going to the traditional latin mass in in that the town i was in there were Within 10 minutes of me, there were three parishes with good liturgies. All at Orientum, by the way, which was wow. interesting. Within So three parishes within 10 minutes. Beautiful music. Very, like, reverent the way they were offered. So I, I, was, I was sort of, like, I had a glut of options. I mean, mm. I, I mean, so even when I was going, it wasn't I see. that difficult. Yeah. I think that's the trend. I think... I hope so. Younger yeah. people are taking it more seriously. They want more um, beautiful liturgies. Now, when it comes to um, the the motu proprio, I was kind of of two minds. I was sad because I knew what was implementing the my pastor at the time has a, he had a doctorate in systematic theology. Um, we they had the traditional line mass every day at that parish. Every at noon o'clock, every single day of the mm -hmm. week. Um, but he did not put up with anti Vatican II, like, let's bash the church rhetoric. He wouldn't put up with it. So, like, the criticisms didn't really apply to that parish. But the other side of me was every single reason given for the Mortu Proprio, I had seen firsthand on multiple occasions throughout the country. Mm. I had already for like two years been actively trying to fight that within the traditional Latin mass communities, mm -hmm. like the people bashing Vatican II and, you know, basically not even reading anything that came out of Rome since, you know, the 1950s. And I was fighting those things and I was encountering it time. I actually stayed away from the traditional Latin mass for years mm. because I was scandalized at some of the attitudes and the way people there were acting like it actively pushed me away for many years it wasn't until i encountered this other parish where that wasn't the case that i was like okay now i can go again gotcha um so i can't deny that those are real problems that take place is it everyone no but it's not an insignificant number that fosters schismatic tendencies um and so the reasons were real and i can't even if it's not how I would have done it, I can't deny that there is a real problem that needed to be addressed. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, I'm liturgically, I'm very close to Pope Benedict. <laughs> Just, you know, he's the theologian I've studied the most, you know, so, um, and I just think he's right on so many things. So I tend to lean in his direction when it comes to liturgical things. Um, and I'm just kind of hoping that over time, that's where things are headed. You see that even if you look at big Catholic conferences in America 20 years ago, 10 years ago versus today. So this January, I'll be going to uh, Focus's Seek conference. Mm -hmm. And they really put in a lot of effort to celebrate the Novus Ordo reverently but i don't think if they were around 20 years ago i'm not sure it would have been the same then it was a lot of kind yeah, of it could be yeah rock music and yeah i think i think it's the trend i'm hoping it's the trend i've seen it in multiple places i don't know if it's the majority yet unfortunately because i i mean i've i've been to places where the pastor basically agrees with me but is too afraid to do anything about it like I've, I've been, when they've said, yeah, I really can't stand the music here, but I don't know what to do. I don't want the people to revolt. I'm going to get in trouble with the bishop. Like, yeah. so even there's still a certain sense of fear of changing things. Mm. Um, um, even when they want to just out of fear of how it's going to react and dealing with the fallout and the perception, right? I'm not claiming the reality, but the perception is that Pope Francis is an enemy of tradition. So, Given, I think, that's my experience. Is that not yours? Whether it should be the perception or that's, not, isn't that the I perception? I think that's the perception, right. yeah. So then for a priest to begin to implement anything traditional, whether that be altar rails or ad orientum or Gregorian chant, the perception then is this person is now acting against what Pope Francis wants and maybe what the bishops even want if they're in line mm -hmm. with Pope Francis on many of these things. So I can see why priests would be reluctant to start implementing these things. They well, don't feel like the bishop has their back. Right. And some of that was even before he was Pope that I'm talking like experiences I had even before then mm. that p they were just afraid of the pushback and what it was going to cause. I see. Or, yeah. you know, the just people worried about implementing changes and then other people come in and just change things overnight. And then, mm. <laughs> you know, yeah, that has different, there's different ways of, I guess, handling that prudentially, but mm. I, one thing I would like to see, okay, this is just sort of my pie in the sky. This mm -hmm. is what I wish would happen. Sure. Is that in every single parish, there was on every Sunday out of however many you have, three, five, whatever, just give one mass. I don't care if it's seven o'clock in the morning, one mass in the Novus Ordo done mostly in Latin, except for the readings and collects and that kind of thing with either no music or Gregorian chant, incense, ad orientum, receiving kneeling and on the tongue, like one Novus Ordo mass, that's it. Just in every parish mm. across the country or the that, globe. And then what would one, happen? Those one. Yeah. Just give us one mass a weekend. That would that's explain. Done in that what way. would then happen is those, those masses the, would explode and yes. all the rest would peter out. Exactly. Because it seems to me if you really want a Eucharistic revival within the Catholic church, and I, I can just tell you two things to do. You, you don't need all these committees, just ad orientum, altar rail. Do that. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. So why well, isn't, just, why do you think give that, us one. But you don't want to answer that if I ask you, well, why isn't that happening? Because that's too I, critical. Well, it's not, no, I don't, it, I think in some ways just the law of inertia tends to apply to even the church. Like there's a, a, a fear factor, and there's also the issue of pastors can be reluctant to change things because if they know they're going to get moved in six years, by the time they even get the parish to come around to their side, someone's mm -hmm. going to come in behind them and change it again. You know, there's a sense of it's just easier to maintain the status quo. And I think for the liturgy to get better, it's going to require people to say enough's enough. Okay, but and see, they're we're going, but they're doing. But that. then there has to be, there has to be. They are. There's got to be people coming behind them that are going to continue it. But you're saying they should be able to say enough's enough, but not from a big platform, because it seems to me that a lot of these. You no, should... I don't have a problem with people <laughs> voicing their desires for the liturgy 
or what they would like to see addressed by the vet. I don't have a problem with that. You're talking about expressing your pastoral needs. Now, I do think the problem is when it comes to a lot of these things, the way things are supposed to go is you're actually supposed to go to certain people in the chain of command. Like, okay, that's what you want. Have you told your bishop that? No. Okay. But you told the world. Okay. You've, did you tell your pastor that? No, I went on Twitter. It's like the faithful aren't even handling it. If, imagine if, the, if, imagine if the nuncio of the United States got an influx of letters mm. talking, like asking if anything can be done about how poorly liturgical okay. music is in the United States. But no one's doing that. They're, yeah. I want to push back against that a little bit. I think a lot of a lot of parishioners probably are speaking to their priests, may have brought it up to their bishops and just feel stonewalled. Like they've just encountered the that, stonewall of bureaucracy and they're frustrated and they might actually have uh, more success in speaking about this publicly. I, if I had to guess, I'd say it's a very small percentage of the people talking about it online. Yeah. I think most people expressing their ire online are not doing that mm. because they're assuming that will be the response in advance. Well, I know my priest, he's a crazy progressive liberal. He's not going to listen to me anyway, right? And I understand that. I mean, conf actual confrontation with a human being is not a comfortable thing. Yeah. It's much easier to just spout off to the atmosphere and let everyone know our rage. Mm. But that's not going to change anything. I and it's actually, I think it actually could hinder the change. Well, I think it has hindered it. I think that's true. But I'm not sure it won't uh, change anything. Why, why do I not think that? Because I think you look at the people that we're referring to who are kind of airing their grievances about the state of the liturgy. There's a ton of people watching these people. And you could say, well, that's because outrage gets clicks. But it's also true that there's a legitimate outrage, I think. No, there is. And I, I you know, I think one of the, the problems is there are legitimate complaints and concerns that people have that are not being addressed and they haven't been addressed for decades and no one is doing anything about it and i do think that's that's mm. legitimate concern um i do think there's matters of prudence for how you go about it um i don't for instance this is just my opinion as i said i love the traditional latin mass i love the ordinary liturgy often i do not appreciate the way the Novus Ordo was celebrated in practice in particular places. <laughs> um, I do not think it's one thing to say, let's, let's educate people on what good liturgical music looks like. Let's educate people on what a, a, a good liturgy looks like. And let's just talk about the beauty of the liturgy and give them examples of it. Mm. It's another thing to actively try to get people who are not against the Novus Order to become against the Novus Order. Yeah. That's not the same thing. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.